All right, folks, this will be our video lecture talking about Maya 3, which is uh, specifically focused on uh, selection methodology as well as uh, adding one new tool to our toolbox, insert edge loop tool. So let's uh, start off at the top with the tool of the day. So where is what we had learned about last lecture uh, was the extrude tool. And that is like the right hand of Maya. If that is the case, then insert edge loop tool is the left hand of Maya. So these are very much the most commonplace and most powerful tools that we have, but they're very simple tools. So e extrude, you took a face or an edge or even a vertice technically, and you took that selected component. And when you extrude it, it creates new faces from where the old faces were connected to your geometry. In the same token, insert edge loop tool creates new geometry by taking an existing face and subdividing it into two smaller faces, right? So whereas before, if I have this cylinder here, there's just the edges for the top and the bottom, if I wanted to, I could go in here and click and drag and add a whole bunch of extra edge loops in here. But in reality, if I look at my object, don't worry, we just barely got started. We just barely got started. So just get yourself uh, set up with the notes. No worries here. So the point I was making though with this tool is that it doesn't necessarily create new geometry in the same way that extrude does where it pulls or pushes new geometry based on what you do. It's just taking your existing geometry and cutting it up into smaller pieces. So in this case, it's the same cylinder we saw before, just with a little bit more uh, divisions in it. So now if I wanted to, I could go to my select tool in my edge mode and double click one of these loops. And now if I wanted to, I can make this cylinders sort of have this shape to it, right? So that's just by adding three edge loops and then scaling the edge loop in the middle. That's all I did. So we're going to come back to multiple edge loops in a second. So I'm going to squeak past this for a moment. And let's chat briefly about selecting multiple things. So. I've already had this question from several of you as we've gone through this about selecting more than one object, component, what have you at a time. So both control and shift can be used to adjust your selections. So typically you will use shift. I would say that most of the time you will use shift when you're doing things. And so if you take a look, a close look at my example image here that's in the notes, we start with a selection that are these faces along the top. If I hold shift and then drag over the object, it will then add and subtract. So it will add the faces that weren't in the selection to the selection, but it will also recognize, hey, these faces were already selected. Since you held down shift, that's your way of telling me, oh, these should no longer be selected. So at the same time, it can be adding and subtracting from the same selection if you use shift. So going back over to here, I could select, uh, say, this ring of faces. We'll talk about what I just did in a moment. And then if I held shift, and in fact, let me do this. So I'll add this to my selection. And then if I hold shift and drag a box over the whole thing, it will understand that, hey, I didn't want to do this. Hey. Don't worry, we're just in progress. We just barely started, but you already have these. Um, so it will have removed these that I already had selected while at the same time knowing I wanted to add these. If I just held control though and dragged, that would simply deselect. So now I, I just deselected these faces up here. I could also hold control and deselect these faces down there as well on the bottom. So now I just have my middle section selected. And you can see how scaling those faces when I have them selected works. Yes? Uh, 
How do you do the edge of the screws again? Because it says the screws go through the mesh tool, so we don't, we don't know what that means. So the, the mesh tools menu is up here at the top. And then when you grab insert edge loop tool, the biggest thing to understand folks is that you need to be clicking on an edge to split that edge, right? So if I wanna add an edge loop that runs horizontal, I do need to click and drag on one of the vertical edges and that will show me the edge that I'm trying to cut in and I can decide where along this I would like to put it. So I can put it up here if I want, closer to the top. And then if I scale it from the center, That'll give me some kind of effect that looks like this. All right. So let's continue talking about selections. So the biggest thing about today that I want to point out is selecting your edge loops. So we can add the edge loops. We can divide our object more. What do we do next? So if you add an edge loop, so if I'll go mesh tools, insert edge loop, and I add an edge loop, let's say, oh, I didn't want to add it there actually. Let's say here, right? Well, once it's locked in, you will see that it becomes selected for me. It's automatically selected, it is orange. So I can just press R and switch to my scale tool and just you know change it how I'd like. Now, if I need to go back and change another edge loop though, that I've already placed, say I want to adjust this one now, Switch back to my select tool, because that's what select tool is for, it is for selecting. And then I can double click on this loop here and you will see that it gives me the whole loop. And then going back to what we were talking about a moment ago, if I hold shift, I can double click another loop and another loop and add those to my selection. If I hold shift and double click it again, uh, oh, if I hold control and double click it, it will realize to get rid of the whole loop. If you do shift, it thinks you want to add it back. The so you'll figure it out. Stuff that comes with experience. Um, but anyway, so I have these three selected together. I could scale them together if I wanted. Right, I could scale them in and then apart if I wanted to. And see how that changed the shape of this. So again, when you want to select a loop, just hold shift and double click it. Again, make sure you are on the proper tool for what you are doing. Please note my nomenclature right here. So we have, of course, our select tool, our move tool, our rotate tool, our scale tool. And then of course, under mesh tools, you'll find your insert edge loop tool. So I'm laboring the word tool so much because you will notice I'm adding an edge loop. And if I click anywhere on this object, it will think I'm trying to add a loop still. So if I'm trying to switch to selecting this edge loop, I need to use the proper tool, which is to say I need to be on the select tool. So make sure that you are swapping out of the insert edge loop tool when you are not using it to add new edges. So B, you are the tool operator. You must be smarter than the tool you are operating. Maya is the tool you are operating. So please make sure you are aware of what tool you're using at what time. If you're making mistakes and you're not sure what's going on, the first thing to do mentally for your reset, you know, mentally reset and then look at, okay, what tool am I on? What selection mode am I in? Are these the correct ones that I should be using? So for that case, you should be in actually object mode when you go to use your uh, insert edge loop tool. But then if you're not like able to select this edge or whatever, is it because you're in face mode and then you hit insert edge loop tool and then you tried to add this when you're actually still in face mode, right? Is it that you still have the insert edge loop tool up when you should have the select tool up? So take it slow. So that's my note on that. Couple more things about selections. So I'm gonna do expand selection first because this one will more come up on our next set of notes. But as you can see from my example image here, we start with that middle area of faces, that middle range of faces selected. And then I just scaled the, or expanded rather, the selection by holding shift and then tapping 
The carrot keys, as they are called, it is the period and the comma key next to the letter M on your keyboards, commonly called the carrot keys. And so if you hold shift and tap the carrot key while you have a selection, so if I select this single face right here and hold shift and tap the carrot key once, you'll see how it selects the eight faces around it. And I can grow that selection again to the 16 faces I want to know five to yeah 16 faces around the um, eight faces that I just selected etc right so you can see how it's growing one spot at a time similarly if I selected a range it would grow the range basically row by row so let's talk about select range because that one is much more relevant. So uh, selecting a range, you're again gonna be holding shift and then you'll double click. So what that might look like is I could, for one example, I could hold shift, hey Zach, and if I double click to here, see how it'll select the range between those faces. I could hold shift and double click to here it'll select the faces between there. Shift and double click, it'll select the faces between all of this. Shift and double click. But more, of, uh, more commonly, you'll select like a whole ring of faces. So again, I'm in my face selection mode. And then I would hold shift and click one face. And now if I held shift and double click the face directly next to it, Maya interprets that as the range is everything in between it the other direction, which is why it will select all the way around your vase. Whereas if I just select it here and shift double click to here, it understands, oh, the shortest distance between those two points are these four faces in between them. So that is what it means to select a range. You can technically select just a few faces, although commonly you'll use this operation if I select one face and shift double click the next one, to select a face ring, as it is called, or just like the loop of all the faces around it. I just wanna make sure you know this is called a face ring. If you call it a loop, I'll get it, but there is a professional jargon for it. Okay, so that's that on that, on that, on that, on this, and okay, so one thing, one more thing to talk about. So let me actually demonstrate what it is that we're going to be doing today. So to show me that you folks can use insert edge loop, I would like you to take a basic cylinder and you're gonna turn it into the silhouette of a vase. So here's how you should set it up. Just make a cylinder, get it off the grid just to make things easy. And I'm gonna scale this up a little bigger just because. And then I'm gonna rotate and look at my cylinder from the top go into face selection mode, and I'm just gonna cl click and drag a small selection box over the center vertice on the top. And what that should do is select both the top and bottom faces so that when I hit backspace, oh see it, it didn't get all of them on the bottom. So just drag, select those, delete them. So you should start with a hollow cylinder, hollowed out cylinder starting from here. And then, you'll start adding edge loops. So my direction to you is that you must add 20 edge loops to this. So that does not include both the top and bottom edge loops. You should add edge loops to this. So mesh tools, insert edge loop. And so then I might you know, add an edge loop here. Great. And then I'll add an edge loop right underneath it. Also great. This time I'm gonna switch to my scale tool and I'm gonna scale this out slightly. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. Let's do it again. Scale tool, slightly. Now, if you wanna see your silhouette a little easier as you go, I wanna remind you folks of the multi-view. So space bar to enter the multi-view, space bar to enter one of the cameras from the multi-view. So I'll go into my side view, and that way I can see my silhouette as I go. So now mesh tools, insert edge loop, boom, and R for the scale tool and scale from the center. Make sure you're scaling from the center and not from the direction that you can see it. Otherwise, you're going to get a lopsided pot. 
right? Unless you're, you know, you stylistically want it this way. But notice how it's not scaled in the X direction. Make sure you're using the center scale if you want it to be uniform on all sides. And so here's where I want to show you the multiple edge loops thing that we didn't talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and throw one more edge loop, let's say down here towards, whoops, towards like the two thirds point here. Okay, so now I have an edge loop here and an edge loop here. So now if I go to my mesh tools and I'm going to, uh, I don't know if this shows up in the, the video, it doesn't show up on zoom, but uh, I'm going to zoom in here. So you'll notice that while I'm in the mesh tools menu, if I hover over insert edge loop, great, it hovers over the tool, but you'll notice it does not highlight this little box. So the insert edge loop tool, if you just hover over it and click on it, it'll bring up the default tool. But there are some settings that go along with insert edge loop. So I'm gonna click on this options box and it will open up my tool settings for that. And so um, I would basically say that most of these don't matter. You're not gonna change basically any of these other than to click multiple edge loops and then you might have some amount of you know multiple edge loops so I am going to add four edge loops to this and an important mathematical maxim is that if you cr add X number of loops you will have the result of X plus one subdivisions because this right is already a area of geometry I can edit so that's already a subdivision so if I add so I've set this to multiple edge loops by clicking this dot I typed in the number four now when I click on here you'll see that I cannot drag it but it will equally spread out these four edge loops in that space that I just added so now I can use those nice evenly spaced edge loops I could go back to my select tool I could double click this one and uh, this one and I can scale this outward and then I could grab this and this and scale this inward if I wanted to. And so that will give me something that looks like this. And let's see, so that, that's it for the, for the notes portion. You can ignore the repeat last thing, we'll come back to that. Um, so that's it basically. You are going to be taking your cylinder that you hollow out, and I just asked that you add 20 edge loops. Whoops, and so like I needed to reset my tool. So make sure that if you need to reset your tool, just open up your tool settings again and reset the tool. One thing I will point out is that all of your basic tools also have these kind of settings. So if they're ever being kind of goofy, you can double click them and they will also show you their tool settings and you can hit reset up here. It will not fix everything, but it will fix most things. Like I don't know, for example, if it turns off step, step snap, that might not be included in it, but that's something that you folks, a couple of you turned on this week. So just pointing that out there. Okay. so. Yep, you're going to add upwards of 20 edge loops to this and just keep going as you add the edge loops. So here, let me let me delete these edge loops real quick. So as you add these edge loops, basically you'll add them. So click, hold, and drag. And again, make sure you're dragging on a vertical edge to add an edge loop. You'll add it, and then you can scale, scale from the center, and change, change the shape and then just do this until you've used at least 20 edge loops. Okay, questions, comments, concerns, folks. Melissa. Um, well, cool, <laughs> I'll come over. Other questions? Kyle. No questions from my side. Okay. Okay. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. All right. So I'm going to stop recording. Thanks for watching.